A uh, couple injury notes before we get started. Uh, uh, Easy on Yama, who uh, played sparingly in the game the other night, uh, he'll be probably he'll be questionable uh, for this week uh, with the groin. So we're going to kind of see how he is during the week. Maybe by the latter part of the week, make a decision on whether or not he plays. Uh, Saturday or not, uh, our, our plan is to try to get him as healthy as we can as we get into uh, conference play in a few weeks. So uh, we don't want to re-aggravate any injury uh, to that groin that he has. Uh, Dilla Rosemont and Cedric Graham Burrell are still in uh, concussion protocol, so they'll be out. Uh, Tyler Tutt is uh, still uh, rehabbing a knee surgery from, from last fall. Uh, hopefully in a few weeks we'll have an update on him to see out where he is. and Maybe he could actually start practicing in a few weeks, maybe, maybe a month. And uh, Nick Wilkins had surgery a few weeks ago and uh, he's on schedule uh, with his rehab is starting. So those are the guys that are injured. Um, Coming out of last Saturday's ball game, felt like we came out fairly healthy. Uh, coming out of ball game, it was a physical ball game, but I felt like our kids. We came back Sunday and practice and had a good Sunday practice and and uh, um, got some things worked on, corrected on Sunday. Uh, felt like our kids battled Saturday night. Uh, we talked about that Saturday after the game, um, so we're excited about moving on to the next uh, next opponent. Coach, you mentioned practicing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Not all losses are the same. That was a tough loss to a really good football team. How how did your team come out of that game emotionally? I know disappointed, but did they bounce back? You think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, I, again, we've talked about this season. You know, growing and getting better each week and each day and those type things. So. Uh, we kind of look at this thing daily and then kind of learn from the day and then put it put it away and move to the next day and that's you know that's the one thing I've been really pleased with with the leadership of this football team the the brand counts on this football team's done a good job of keeping our kids focused on the, the moment and not worry about what happened last week or what's going to happen this Saturday let's go get better today and and try to improve and and I think yesterday we went out and had got worked on some things we need to work on and uh, I feel like our kids are handling that really well. As, as young as we are, I've been really impressed with the way they've handled those kind of things. You know, throughout the season, you've talked about certain things your team needs to work on, like perimeter blocking. And mm -hmm. what what are some, you know, despite the improvements they've made, mm -hmm. what are some things they still need to work on? Perimeter blocking. <laughs> yeah, perimeter blocking, and uh, you know we still want to be you know more physical and more precise in the run game uh, on offense, and and continue to grow and get better in our pass game. Uh, we, we're still not there where we want to be in the in the pass game, so uh, we've got some things to do. We got better. You know, we emphasized last week being better on third down on offense. We were better on third down. Um, so you know, this week we, we we're going to emphasize how we we got to score touchdowns in the red zone. We didn't score a touchdown. We kicked two field goals in the red zone. So we've got to figure out how to be better in the red zone this week. Um, so we'll, we'll emphasize that this week in practice. We'll emphasize the perimeter blocking and, and fit and run and, and those things and, and try to be better at those things. You know, you didn't, it was the first game you didn't play Willie Jones. Mm -hmm. You let Damian kind of have the whole game. Mm -hmm. Certainly you a little more comfortable letting him just take all four quarters? Or was that more of just getting Willie some experience? Well, I, I, again, I think. It, it, we don't have a quarterback battle. Damien's our starter, and and you know we want to get Willie reps so he can be better as the season goes on. It, it, you know, most of the time you need two quarterbacks going into a season and finishing the season. So, we if that were to happen, we don't want that to happen. If that were to happen, we need a guy that's had some some game reps. And that's why we put Willie in the games, in the games we put him in. Last week it was a game where, you know, Damian was doing well. So we felt like not interrupting his, his progression in the game and just uh, play him. Um, but, but, you know, we have set plays or set series. We like to throw Willie in the game. If, if things are going good for Damian, then we'll leave Damian in the game. But we'd like to get Willie as much snaps as we can during the 2017 season. Coach, the, the game coming up, mm -hmm. uh, I know you've been around Ohio State, Michigan, and 
North Carolina, NC State, those rivalries, and mm -hmm. the UTSA Texas State rivalry. Of course, there's one game yeah. in the history books, but but all that being said, you know the the matchup does mean a lot to a lot of people, and I, I know mm -hmm. the coaches and the players included in that as well. But uh, just your thought on that word rivalry. Um. You know, I started to do that before I got in here and look up, look in the dictionary what it meant. I, I didn't. I, I had too much other stuff going on today, so I didn't look up the word rivalry. Uh, and usually when I think of rivalry, I think of years of history. <laughs> that's that's what I, I think of years of history. And uh, like you said, I, you know, I've been in three of those ones in October in Dallas. Uh, uh, with a, with a, a stadium split in half and there's, you know, one side Oklahoma, one side Texas. I've been in that uh, that Michigan Ohio State uh, rivalry. I've been in the NC State North Carolina, the the Duke North Carolina. Even though Duke North Carolina wasn't a rivalry while I was there, because we'd beaten them 25 straight times. I don't consider a team that's hadn't won in 25 years being in a rivalry. Um, so I, I've been in those kind of games. So. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to disrespect what everybody's trying to say about the Texas State uh, UTSA rivalry. I just think it has to grow into that uh, when you just start. One, we're not in the same conference. It'd be great if we were in the same conference. That that would make it a rivalry. And uh, what's UTSA would jump into Sun Belt. Um, so. Um, I, I do respect the fan bases and, and the kids that know each other and that are go you know go to different schools and get on Twitter and Facebook and all the stuff and talk crap about each other and all that stuff. But you know our goal is to go out and play our next opponent and get better and try to be a better football team on Saturday than we were this Saturday. What can you tell us about UTSA though? You know, they're, they're two and zero. They beat Baylor, beat Southern. Mm -hmm. Good football team. When you look at the rosters, uh, uh, a lot of experience on their on their roster. A lot of guys, a lot of juniors and seniors. And that's what I look at. I look at depth and and experience on the roster. They got a lot of guys. I think they got seven starters returning on defense. Uh, very talented quarterback. Big physical running back. Uh, good size in both lines. Uh, so they're going to be a big challenge for us. Be a challenge much like we had this past Saturday. Coach, you mentioned Stern, mm -hmm. and I've looked at the first three quarterbacks that the Bobcats have gone up against. Um, you know, you had HBU's quarterback, and then Montez for Colorado, and even Lamb for Appalachian State. Maybe not as mobile yeah. as some quarterbacks. What I've seen on Stern, he can he can move his feet. Yeah. Uh, maybe better than those other three guys. So, what does that do for you in terms of preparing the defense? Well, we got to be more disciplined in obviously the pass uh, rush lanes. I think it'll be a little bit similar to the guy we saw at uh, Colorado. He, he, you know, I think he can get out, uh, um, you know, as well as the guy from Colorado could get out. Probably not as strong as a Colorado's quarterback, but uh, uh, he is that. He can he can make the off schedule plays. He's got a good arm. Uh, I think they do, you know, they do the things that he does well. You know, they can get him on the move some, um, but he can he can make a lot of plays. We have got to be really disciplined on our edges. If if we're trying to flush him one way or the other, we got to make sure we flush him that way and not let him come back the other way. Uh, but we've got to do the same things that we talked about last week uh, defensively. We got to find a way to harass the quarterback and uh, force him to make some throws that he doesn't want to throw. Coach, going back to Saturday. What did the last three, four minutes of the fourth quarter tell you about your team? Uh, well, I, I think it told us that we had trained well in the offseason because I felt like we were physically ready to, to compete in those last three or four minutes. Um, I felt like, uh, you know, our, our summer uh, training camp, working two-minute and working situations came into play and that we had done a good job with that. Um, you know, I felt like we weren't we weren't out of place in the last three or four minutes. I felt like we were uh, uh, in position where uh, we were ready to go win a game, and uh, we came up a little short. But uh, felt like we were in that position to to go win a game. We were talking in the last, I guess, minute of the game about two point play, and uh, that was uh, that was our mindset. Coach, can you talk a little bit about the defensive improvement? Did you think that your guys would be sort of hitting their gears like this three games into the season? 
Well, we hope so. Uh, I mean, you hope to play good defense. I mean, that's, that's the only way you're going to have a chance to have a successful program in my mind. Uh, I, don't, I don't know very many successful programs that don't play good defense. Um, so uh, I think Coach McCray and our defensive staff and A.J. and some of our, our defensive players, uh, you know, we're a little older on that side of the ball than we are on offense. And uh, some of those guys got their face beat in last year. And they've gotten bigger and stronger in the off season, so uh, they know the expectations and the standards. And you know what's kind of neat is to look out there and see guys communicating and talking and being able to, you know, we're able to change defenses, you know, a lot within one play. And uh, it's because guys are all locked in and on the same page. And uh, it's kind of fun to watch. Uh, they're able to play fast. Uh, we're not we're not intimidatingly big. But I think we play hard, and we, we try to strike people. And to me, that's what good defenses do. You know, there was a few changes in the defensive backfield last week. Taylor at corner, um, mm -hmm. Stephon starting at safety. How did you feel about how they played last game, like as a, as a unit? Uh, I thought Taylor played well, played about like a corner would play in the first ball game, uh, a little rusty. Um, but I thought he played with great effort. Uh, it was really good to get Stefan back out there. He, uh, you know, he's an older guy. He's one of the guys that, you know, one of the holdovers uh, from previous staff uh, that's really bought into to what we're doing. And I think he's done a really good job. And uh, it was kind of neat to see him. I, I told him before the game how excited I was to see him play and uh, get back out there and play. And I thought he played well. And we got Krotzik coming up right yep. after you. He's had quite a journey from mm -hmm. offense to defense. Uh, <coughs> tell us, what has he meant to this team so far this year? He started all three games in safety yeah. pretty well. Well, uh, you know, when you, when you take a job, you kind of look around and you look at guys and you kind of, you know, as, as the head coach, what I do is I look and see where, where roles guys could play and help us be successful. and. And uh, and AJ was over on the offensive side. He, you know, was a running back, and you know, I made the decision to move him to to H as a receiver, and and then we start saying, you know, we need to do something different at H. And I said, shoot, he can go, he can definitely go play uh, dog safety for us, which is our boundary safety, and uh, uh, he's smart, uh, he's physical, uh, he he loves the game. Uh, he's a he's a really good fit for what we're looking for in that position, you know. And it uh, you don't have to be the greatest of athletes, but you got to be a guy to love the game and, and can communicate and talk and and do the things. And that's that's why he's in that position. That's why he's starting because he's been the most consistent guy at that position. Coach UTSA runs a four two five defensively. What do you expect to see from that? Uh, a lot of pressure from different angles. A lot of four strong, four weak pressures, internal pressures. When you watch them on tape, that, that's kind of where they hang their hat. Um, so we've got to do a good job of IDing where the pressure is coming from and be able to, we want to be able to run the football. So we've got to be able to find a way to run the football either into it or away from the pressure uh, and then be able to pick it up in protection in the pass game and win on the one-on-one. -on -one. So, uh, you know, we, we, it's really from week to week, we may see a different scheme, maybe four down, maybe four, two, five, maybe three, four, but uh, we get about the same things every week. Uh, and and uh, people, you know, we, we're, Probably is not as experienced up front uh, as, as some people are. So people are going to try to affect their offensive line, and we've got to continue to get better and uh, be able to identify that stuff in our offensive line. Did you have your best game in terms of pass protection this past Saturday? I thought they did a really good job. Uh, well, there were a couple times, you know, I, all sacks aren't on the offensive line. <laughs> and, uh, and, and most fans don't understand that. But uh, sometimes the quarterback needs to get the ball out of his hand. And uh, so I, I thought they did a, a fairly, fairly good job. Uh, what we've got to do is do a better job of, of running the football in the red zone. Coach, I know you've said that, you know, one game so it doesn't really make it a rivalry. But mm -hmm. from your experience being in rivalry games, do you feel that the players kind of are a little bit different? Maybe there's a little bit more pep in their staff or they're just kind of a little bit more motivated to kind of go out? When they, when they play a team with this proximity, this close. 
Uh, I mean, I you know I've seen guys in this building all week long and uh, or all day long. Um, you know, watching film, and, and, and maybe it is, maybe because they know guys on the other team, that kind of thing. I think you get some of that. Um, but I think what we've done is is really try to take the, the name off of a, a helmet or a, a, a logo off of a uniform and say, hey, here's our opponent each week. Let's go play. You know, let's go get better. Let us go get better. And... Uh, take all the emotional and the human element stuff out of it and let's go get better as football players and uh, be the best version of us on Saturday. That's that's the approach we're going to, I don't care who we're playing. And then, you know, that's just kind of our, our approach. And, you know, the fans may not like it, I don't know, but uh, the fans don't have to play 60 minutes out there either.